Hello there, this is Anna Amelia from Northeast Animal Rights doing another one of our Saturday Spotlight interviews. And today we're delighted to welcome along Aiden, who is a campaigns manager at Animal Justice Project. So welcome Aiden, and thank you very much for doing this for us. Yeah, thank you very much for having me on. You're very, very welcome. So Aiden, we'll just go straight to the questions if that's okay. First one to ask everyone, which is, could you tell me about your vegan journey, please? Um, yeah, so I think I kind of started out the same as a lot of vegans do, like being an animal lover. Um, I was always one of those kids that, yeah, had lots of animals and loved animals and just that that's kind of everything I used to talk about and read about and um, watch tons of document, you know, all the wildlife documentaries mm -hmm. and things, um, or be out in nature, you know, like climbing trees and looking for like bugs and things. Um, and then as a teenager, so about, I think I was about 13 years old, went vegetarian. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know any other vegetarians at the time. I didn't really know what the term vegetarian was because I wasn't really, you know, didn't really ever see that term anywhere. I didn't know any vegetarians, certainly didn't know any vegans. Um, but I just knew that I didn't want to eat animals anymore. So I started making that connection, like the animals are eating were, you know, real animals. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I went to college and my plan was to become a vet. And so I studied everything to become a vet. And whilst I was at college, I really wanted to work with animals. So this was when I was about 16 and applied for lots of different animal jobs and got told I was too young and like couldn't be covered by insurances. So I actually ended up working on a farm um, because that's the only work that would, you know, take a 16 year old on. <laughs> Um, so I actually ended up working on a farm for about five years. Um, it was a half working farm, half open farm. So the open farm was, um, with the public. Um, so that was a nice shiny side, mm -hmm. um, where everything was, you know, clean and pristine. And mm -hmm. we had reindeer and alpaca and cows mm -hmm. and goats and everything you can imagine really. Mm -hmm. And then the work inside was, um, a beef farm. <clears throat> and the beef farm used to take um, the dairy calves from um, different dairy farms and from markets and then they used to be fattened for beef mm -hmm. and then during that time as well I took a month out and went up to Scotland and worked on a sheep farm during a lambing season um, a really really huge sheep farm um, so I've seen quite a few aspects of like different farming industries as well mm -hmm. um, and then I took a couple of years out um, before I went to uni, decided in the end I'll do a zoology degree yeah. rather than veterinary. Yeah. And it was as I was doing my degree that I decided to go vegan. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I, by that point, I kind of heard a little bit about veganism. Somebody I knew had just gone vegan. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was like the biggest step ever. I couldn't possibly do it because I've been vegetarian for about eight to nine years by that point. Mm -hmm. And I think about eight years. And then, yeah, I just thought I can't do it anymore. So I decided to go vegan and I jumped straight into activism. Yeah. 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 So did you, did it cause any conflict with you? With, I mean, presumably the people who you were working with on the farm knew you were vegetarian. So did that cause you any problems? Um, yeah, it was kind of always like one of those running jokes that I was a vegetarian farmer. Mm -hmm. um, and I used to be like with the public side as well. I used to be very honest with people because most people who had to visit would obviously eat animals and I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there was lots of cute, you know, we had piglets and lambs and calves and things and they were all fattened and killed. Yeah. And um, which obviously I really did not like even back then. But I used yes. to kind of distance myself from those animals which was yeah it's quite sad looking back but it was kind of how I protected myself and mm -hmm. um, see so yeah, I used to be like open mm -hmm. with the public in terms of like where they're going it used to always be a really big shock you know all oh, these animals are going to be killed and they're the ones that you're about to eat in the restaurant and yeah um so yeah there was a, there was a bit of conflict <laughs> like we used to work with various other farmers you know who would drop <laughs> off animals or pick up animals and yeah how's yeah. kind of always that odd the odd mm. person. Yeah. Hmm. So can you tell me a bit, I mean, you've told us obviously kind of like your, your background so far. So what about, how did that lead you into working with in animal rights and, and where you are now with Animal Justice Project as a campaigns manager? So as soon as I went vegan, within a couple of months, I was out doing activism. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I was really looking. Oh, you frozen. <laughs> frozen. Hang on. Record not to come on. I'm all right. Yeah. Two, sorry, two seconds. So you just put you just are you there? Yeah. yeah. So it's all right. It was just a little bit of a flicker there with the, with the internet there. Back on. Oh. Yeah, you were talking about Nottingham. Yeah. Is it still recorded? Sorry. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I moved to Nottingham and there's a really well-established animal rights group here yeah. called Nottingham Animal Rights yeah. that have been going for um, over a couple of decades now. Mm. Um, so I started doing activism with them and they were super active at the time. Yeah. So we were doing, um, you know, outreach events and things and protests like every single weekend, a couple of times yeah. a week usually. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I was with them for a few years yeah. and... Um, we then hosted a World Day for Animals in Labs. Yeah. And we co-organised it with Claire from Animal Justice Project. Yeah, yeah. Because um, obviously the focus back then for AJP was um, vivisection. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's how I um, first met Claire. Mm -hmm. So I think that was back in like 20, I don't know, like 2017. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Possibly, yeah, 2017, 2018. Mm. And then um, Claire needed help on a new project. Mm. And, yeah, I just kind of ended up having a call with her. And then, <laughs> yeah, that was back in, that was actually six years ago. Today, yeah. like this month is my six-year anniversary. Yeah. So you're like an old hand now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, so the group is going to have the 10-year anniversary in yeah, December well, this year. That's brilliant. So, that's brilliant. yeah, I've been with the group for over half of the time. It's been winning yeah. now, which is... Yeah, it's amazing. Which is, is bizarre, yeah. But yeah, yeah. six whole yeah. years I've now been been yeah. here. So, yeah. I mean, you do some absolutely amazing work. Uh, I mean, you, I know you've been involved in undercover investigations as well. Um, so could you talk? Could you talk us through the process of how you decide that you're going to do a particular project? Because you must get asked, "Could you have a look at this? Can you have a look at this?" I mean, we we get contacted, "Can you help with this?" You know, for so many different things, and a lot of them you just know you can't. Yeah. So how do you decide that this is going to be the one that you're going to do? And then what what's the process? You, you go through yeah so um it varies a lot mm -hmm. um we do get contacted by a lot of people because we do have um a whistleblower and yeah. um, contact line as well yeah um so if there are you know any if there's any members of the public or even like ex-farmers or even actual farmers as well mm -hmm. um they do tend to be whistleblowers as well mm -hmm. um so they might report certain places. Um, so that might be somewhere that we look into. Um, but what we tend to do is we look at kind of where the industries are at, um, uh, like industry trends, uh, what supermarkets are doing, yeah, um, various things like that. So like if there's any like big commitments, for example, that the industries are um, promoting or... Mm. Um, whether, you know, an industry is on decline and it kind of needs a bit more pressure push, to kind of keep yeah. going in that direction. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Or even if there's areas that we know about that ha actually haven't been investigated yet. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. although there's been a long-standing history of, of investigations in the UK, there has been quite a lot of areas that haven't been looked into. So we've done mm -hmm. a lot of um, industries that, yeah, have never been filmed before, or like yeah. specific actions on farms that have never been filmed before. Mm, yeah. So, so when so when you, so now you've decided what you're going to do, like which particular area? How do you start? Kind of um, how do you start the process of doing the you know working out who's going to do the under, undercover investigation, and then getting it out to to people like me. So we have our own team of investigators. Um, so everyone, you know, everyone you kind of see at Animal Justice Project that's, yeah. you know, the public facing people like myself mm -hmm. and Claire and everyone, um, you know, we're not on the investigations team. We do go into farms with some, um, yeah. for some investigations, do yeah. some film into camera. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we have our own investigators. Mm -hmm. um, so that involves, you know, a lot of research, a lot of um, site visits. Yeah. Um, and then once a site has been selected, you know, it might be installing cameras, it might be open mm. footage, it might be um, applying for jobs and getting a worker in there with secret hidden cameras. Nice. Um, yeah. So we do a whole range of tactics. Mm -hmm. And then once the filming has finished, it obviously needs to be process, uh, processed. 
which takes a long time because we may have days and days and days of footage. Yeah. So it's looking at every single second of every single clip yeah. Yeah. Um, to see what has been happening on you know, on the farm or in the slaughterhouse. Yeah, I can imagine that part of it must be pretty traumatic because it's, I suppose, as an investigator, it must be pretty traumatising going in, that it kind of like being scared and kind of like being conscious of your own safety and everything um, and any particular, you know, issues with the police. Um, but then after after part of that is sifting through all of the footage and having to watch it over and over again. And it, it must take its toll on, on people like you who are watching it. Yeah, it certainly can do. So, um, so yeah, the investigators are looking at it, you know, kind of second by second. Yeah. Um, so in a lot of detail. Yeah. Um, so they're really experiencing all of the footage and everything yeah. that's taking place. Yeah. Um, and then basically once it's processed, it's, um, you know, narrow, narrowed down to every part where something actually happens. And then that's yeah. what's handed to me. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have to then go through all of the footage myself yeah. to get acquainted with it and to know exactly what's happened yeah. um, and start, you know, doing a bit more research about the company, um, yeah. writing down, you know, what we've found, yeah. if there's any legal breaches. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it can definitely take a toll because it might be, it might be that I'm watching, you know, a whole week's worth of slaughterhouse footage mm -hmm. where animals are being killed over and over again. Yeah. And it's never just animals being killed, is it? You know, when yeah. you go into these places, it's yeah. the abuse and everything yeah. like, like that as well. So, yeah, yeah, it it definitely takes its toll. I think, uh, I mean, we, we, I remember watching, um, I, did, I did a one about egg, um, the egg industry um, a few months ago. And I used, I thought, I thought rather than kind of like me talk about the process, I actually used the clip which you shared on social media and the undercover footage within the poultry farm, because I thought that was just what people needed to see. But it was just so, so sad and grim that people are people think it's okay to treat animals like that um i mean i suppose we shouldn't be surprised because people are prepared to kill them so you know that they're, they're not really that bothered about what happens to them before then but cram them into crates and legs sticking out mm -hmm. and throwing them around and kicking them and all sorts um and you, you know a, a, a lot of what we get is you know people will say that this is just one bad apple you know this is one bad farmer or one bad set of practices or one bad company but we know it's not so so what's your your answer to, to the people who will say that yeah, I think as more investigations have been released, like especially since we released our first one back in 2019, mm -hmm. which was in July as well. So that's like, yeah, five years ago today, we released our first ever investigation. Yeah. Um, and since then, the more we've released, because we're soon, probably, you know, I don't know, in the next couple of months, yeah. we're releasing um, another investigation. And that's actually mm -hmm. our 20th investigation right. in five yeah. years. Yeah. So the more investigations we've released, this this issue tends to come up a lot more. Yeah. That whole bad bad apple story, especially yeah. within the media. Yeah. And the response from the industry as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and assurance labels, you know, RSPCA assured, yeah. etc. Yeah. Um. So we actually think about this from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Um. So you'll probably notice the last <clears throat> quite quite a few of the last investigations that we've done haven't just been one single place. Yeah. Um, we go to multiple places for one single investigation and they're all mm. included yeah. um, in the same release. Yeah. So we might do that where, so for example, this year we've done a two part release of cage free egg farms. Yeah. And across those two releases, we've actually been inside seven different free range egg farms, mm -hmm. um, all of which were RSPCA assured. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and all of them, you know, obviously were terrible places. Yeah. Some were worse than others, but they yeah. were all bad. Um, yeah. The other thing we did with that investigation as well, we targeted farms that were either ran by or associated with people from Beef Rapper. So that's the British Free Range Egg Producers Association. Right. So that's, an in, that's um, a council that represents the British Free Range Egg Industry. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, you know, they should be the top of the top farms as well. Mm -hmm. Again, they were all our SPCA assured. Yeah. Um, so we went for multiple farms. We went for those that should be at the top mm -hmm. and but run by people that represent mm -hmm. the industry itself yeah. as a whole yeah. um, and at the highest welfare <coughs> assurance label attached to them. Mm -hmm. um, and that investigation was carried out over many months. Yeah. So yeah. it's like a time... 
you know, mm. it's the number of locations, it's the assurance mm. scheme, it's the yeah. um, industry council and yeah. um, the number of farms itself. Mm. So I, we do tr we do try to yeah, yeah. tackle that issue before we mm. actually begin. I think it's uh, really important that these sort of investigations take place because um, I know that, you know, a, 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 the industry will say and the public will say as well that, that it's just an example of one bad apple. We hear it over and over again, like Panorama when they did the big the big expose on um, on the on, um, on the the dairy industry. Um, you know, the farmers were repeatedly saying it's just one bad apple. This doesn't reflect yeah. common practice. So it's important that you are able to go into multiple farms, multiple organisations to prove that it's not, and it's a, you know, it's a, it's it's repeated right across the board. Um, I mean, that's not to say that every single farmer who has animals is going to abuse them. However, what we always say to people is these animals are still going to be killed. They end up in yeah. exactly the same kill floor. They have the same, you know, they're not, they don't go to sleep. They don't go to sleep peacefully. You know, they all end up in exactly the same place, whether they're free range or whether they are caged or, you know, are intensive, intensively farmed as well. Um, yeah, exactly. And the, ca the catching of the animals is exactly the same, no matter yeah. what assurance label they have or if they're yeah. organic. The yeah. transportation is still exactly the same and the slaughter yeah. process. Yeah. So, so really, the, the public are kind of the, um, the being fooled because, you know, obviously the big fancy market and, you know, the happy egg company and the, the laughing cow mm. and all this sort of stuff. And, um, you know, these animals are willingly given up their, their body parts and secretions and, you know, and, you know, they're absolutely fine to do that and it keeps them healthy. But we know that, like you said, from the, from literally from the time that they they they, um, they had to take into slaughter, it's the, the catching of them, the transportation, the offload on the other end, you know, what one one pig or, you know, a free range pig is no different to, um, to a, you know, to an intensively farm pig. Um, and that was something which we used to, when we did some outreach at the weekend. We used some footage from um, from Pignorant, and yeah. um, we showed the, um, the the free range um, pig being killed, and people were absolutely horrified to know that that was a free range farm. And you know, we said mm -hmm. that well, not only that, obviously when the pigs are gone to slaughter, they are treated exactly the same. So you're, you're absolutely being fooled. So I know you've got a um, you've got a big campaign out at the moment, and I presume that's going to go on. You know, we're keeping on pressure on the RSPCA, and not Animal Rights, and are doing something similar, but, but not in the same way. Um, yeah. So would you like tell us about that RSPCA campaign as well, and why you're doing that? Yeah, so um, we've always had a focus on RSPCA assured mm -hmm. um, because we do go after you know the highest welfare typically for our investigations yeah. we have a few investigations that kind of go for the industry standard uh -huh. um you know the typical intensive farms but most of our work is the high welfare end so it's either yeah. rspc assured or it's organic uh -huh. um or you know some small independent family run business for example yeah. um so we've released five investigations so far yeah. um over the past five years that have yeah. been rspc assured yeah. Um, so that's from farms to depopulation to transportation and slaughter as well uh -huh. and we because of the big anniversaries this year so RSPCA's 200th birthday yeah. RSPCA short's 30th birthday yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah they've kind of been they've been on our radar for a couple of years to do something yeah. when it comes yeah. to their anniversary because yeah. um, we knew by then we'd have even more releases under their assurance label. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got a petition at the moment that's running. Um, yeah. I think there's like over over 7,000 people have signed it so far, which is really, really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been working alongside um, Animal Rising as well. So, you know, we do have regular catch-ups with them yeah. um, to know exactly what they're doing. Um, to hope, hopefully then our work can complement each other. So yeah. obviously we are taking slightly different angles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we did, we um, co-hosted an action as well outside of RSPCA's yeah. headquarters. Yeah. Um, which at like over a hundred activists attended. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so which is brilliant. Was, was brilliant. Yeah, brilliant yeah. for an activism yeah. event these yeah. days, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It um, is. I know. Yeah, getting a hundred yeah. people. Yeah. Um, yes. So yeah, we've been running um, online actions as well. So mm -hmm. we've been... Um, doing a twitter storm or an x storm mm -hmm. um so on that day we had um so like you know when you run in a twitter storm it's um people are sending their i'm sure you know this but yeah, yeah we've, we've done it yeah we're doing it yeah we're doing it we're supporting yours yeah 
Yeah, so like people are posting kind of pre-written tweets on their own accounts. Yeah. So they count as individual posts. Yeah. Um, so every single time RSPCA, RSPCA short, and actually the CEO of yeah. RSPCA were being tagged in. Yeah. Um, so between ourselves and our, our supporters, mm -hmm. over 1,500 posts were sent out. Yeah, that's brilliant. Just yeah. within a few hours on that day. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we've done a second action as well where we've targeted all of their social media, mm -hmm. where people <clears> were commenting on all of their posts, yeah. referring to our investigations, promoting yeah. our petition, and calling on calling on them to, to drop um, yeah. to drop our <clears throat> short. Yeah. And then this week we've just done <clears throat> um Google reviews as well. Mm -hmm. So so we've, um, I mean, I've seen, I know exactly the, the ones you're talking about because I've been doing that on our on our pages, like um, they put in posts out, you know, on all of the, basically every time the RSPC puts a post out, putting something like that on this. Um, yeah. But RSPC assured, I mean, obviously, ultimately, you want, no, you want no animal farming at all. And the RSPC assured scheme, I suppose, it's a, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's looking at it from like a welfare point of view. Yeah. So um, you are what you're kind of like saying. I suppose. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong here, but you're saying that it's not about. Um, we we want people to not eat animals at all. But the other side of it is, those of you who think this is high welfare, you're being absolutely fooled. So so if you look at this, this is wrong. And then if you look a little bit further, you can see that you don't eat animals at all. Is that kind of like my sort of naive way of putting putting it? No, that's right. So we always try to keep our well, we always do keep our messaging rights based. Yeah. So we would never promote any form of welfare, which is yeah. why we do go after these high welfare labels. Yeah. yeah. Um, and organic farms and yeah. you know, in the industry leaders. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we want people to see that RSPCA RSPCA short label doesn't really make much of a difference to the animals. Yeah. As we've proven over many many yeah. farms yeah, many yeah. transportation journeys yeah. um, and many different investigations over multiple yeah. years yeah. so we have the proof already yeah as as we discussed earlier it's not just one bad apple yeah um so our proof is there yeah um you know other groups have got proof as well yeah um so yeah the the assurance label doesn't make a difference to the animals yeah we want people to know that obviously we do get some people saying well if you take away the high welfare um labels you're only kind of left with the intensive farming but mm. what, what i think people don't realize is that rspca farms are intensive farms yeah yeah <laughs> yeah they are yeah. they are still they are still yeah. absolutely huge yeah. Um. You know, a single hen shed can still have sixteen thousand birds inside. Yeah. That's an intensive farm. That's a lot of animals inside a single shed. Yeah. You know, I've been inside these farms myself, and it's they're really not nice places. And I've been yeah. inside farms that aren't RSPC assured, mm. and they're exactly the same. Yeah. And it's um. Yeah. I, I mean, I think people think it's it is it's kind of like a, a reassurance for them that they are you know the they don't want to stop eating animals but it's kind of like it's okay because the rspc who are this big trusted organization they've put the stamp on it mm -hmm. so they you know we trust them you know um but yeah it's really sad especially because the rspc are supposed to be about preventing cruelty yeah that's their entire you know yeah. that's literally what their name is yeah so yeah. it doesn't make any sense that they are yeah. that they're so you know we've looked into um this year we released a broiler hatchery investigation and they were RSPCA assured. Yeah. So from the moment those animals are born or hatched, they've got this label on their heads already. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, every single step is assured, the transportation, the farm, in the hatcheries, yeah. Yeah. the slaughter, and how the RSPCA can back any of that in yeah. the sense of that they want to prevent yeah. cruelty is just... Yeah. It's yeah, it's just, yeah, it is. It is. Mm. So you talk about you, you, you know, you kind of going into um, intensive farms and RSPCA, um, you know, intensive farms. Um, so how do you look after yourself when you, you know, when you come up with these awful environments? Um, you know, how do you you make sure that you don't suffer from trauma or flashbacks or or do you? You know, how how do you cope with that? Um, I think it's about balance. Mm -hmm. So you know, every day I'm not processing slaughter footage or visiting a farm for example you know there's a lot of kind of research and writing and creation in the background as well mm -hmm. um 
So yeah, I think it is about balance. When, when I'm working on an investigation, it will include days of going through footage and looking at yeah. horrible imagery. And that, you know, that will creep into multiple weeks, actually. Mm. Um, you know, with writing video scripts and website content and social media and, mm. you know, creating videos as well. Um, but yeah, I think balancing it out as much as possible. Mm. I can feel when I've watched too much footage and it's starting mm. to affect me, so I'll just stop for a bit and do something else. Yeah. Um, I volunteer at an animal sanctuary yeah. every week. Mm. Um which is really important for vegans to do if anybody is watching. <laughs> That's something that every vegan should be looking into is to help in sanctuaries because they need the help the most. Um, but yes, yeah, so I go to sanctuaries, um, to a sanctuary every week um, to kind of, you know, bal balance out with what I'm doing. Also, oh, sorry, I'm going to have a cat walking past. <laughs> um, yeah, balance, balance, the horrific footage that I'm watching mm -hmm. by being around animals who are safe yeah. and animals who have been rescued from those situations. Because yeah. um, the sanctuary I volunteer at, um, you know, they've rescued hens from mm -hmm. egg farms. So like ones we've investigated, they've taken mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. um, groups of male dairy calves. Mm -hmm. um, so they actually took on a group of male dairy calves when mm -hmm. we were doing our big dairy slaughter investigation a few years ago. Mm -hmm which was a very, you know, it's a strange coincidence, but it was really nice because I was watching mm. calves being killed inside slaughterhouses for mm. weeks for weeks mm. and um, then going to a sanctuary and kind of spending time with calves who luckily haven't ended up in a situation like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I just think it's about balance. And obviously I've got my own um, little animal family as well. Mm -hmm. um, so just, yeah, spending time with them and... yeah. Yeah. yeah, just think, just get in like the positive side as well as well as the negative. Yeah, I think I mean you, you're right. I mean, we're spending time on animals is probably the best um, sort of not, not solution, but the best um, help for us, best medicine, I suppose. Um, we, yeah. we we go down to Millington's uh, Magical Barn in, in Wakefield. I'm saying down we go down there, but it'll be up for you. Um, we go down to Wakefield, yeah. um, you know, and um, we support them because they're a vegan sanctuary and uh, and and Jake does some brilliant work. And some of us are also volunteers for wildlife rescue as well. So that that um, helps us get the balance because when you see those little lives in your you know in your hand or in your in your cage, you know, kind of like when mm -hmm. you when you collect them, that kind of gives us the this is why we're doing it sort of thing. Exactly. I think as well because when we do when we do investigations and you know when we're working in animal rights, we a lot of the time we're talking about the industry as a whole as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously, there's so many animals trapped within that industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So it's really nice to be able to bring back and see a positive difference for yeah. individual animals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because it can be a bit, you know, you can feel a bit hopeless sometimes if you're looking yeah. at the broiler industry that are killing over yeah. one billion a year yeah. just in the UK. I yeah. mean, those numbers, we can't even fathom what a billion no. even it is it in terms like of individuals. Yeah. Um, but if you go to a farm and, you know, if there's 20 rescued hens, you yeah. can kind of sit with them and see the individual personalities and just know that, yeah. they're not going to have to go through those horrors ever again yeah. yeah and they can just live out a really nice life now yeah yeah so what's what's next for you then what's next for you as an individual or as, as part of animal justice project what's going on with you um with animal justice project um we're as i mentioned earlier we're currently working on our 20th investigation release mm. um which is yeah very bizarre because um the I think the second project I ever did with Animal Justice Project was our slower growing chicken investigation back in 2019. Mm -hmm. So yeah, to, to think that we're doing our 20th investigation mm -hmm. release yeah. now and that mm -hmm. I've worked on every single one is yeah. yeah, quite strange to think about really, but it's yeah, it's nice at the same time. Um, but yeah, so we're working on another investigation release, which we hope it will be out around August, mm -hmm. um, like maybe mid, mid August. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to include <laughs> that's going to include um, a lot of campaign actions, yeah. and so actions that you know supporters can take as well. So it'll be a really interactive one as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got a really big project launching in the autumn. Mm -hmm. Um, that's going to have loads and loads of different elements. So I'm working on that as well mm -hmm. um, in the background. And then, 
Oh, and second weekend of August as well, we've got a, um, we're going to have a week all about eggs. So we're going to have an action week mm. where we're going to work with different groups across the UK, right. um, which I think you guys. Oh, yes, yeah, we have I'm learning, I'm, I'm learning, I think, yes. I'm sure that's something familiar really, we are doing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think you were, the, yeah. Yeah, you were the first group to yeah, come back and yeah, be at the top of the list. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be working with groups across the UK to do an action week on eggs mm. um, after yeah. we've done, you know, such a lot of investigation work on the egg, egg industry we've looked at every single part so we're basically bringing that all together and getting people on the streets to yeah. um, talk about the industry so yeah. and then yeah. once we've done all of that we're going to be looking into you know planning the next couple of years ahead as well so yeah lots going on so we'll so be down the animal rights march in london yes yeah we'll, we'll, yeah we'll, we'll our, see you down there our team's going to be at the animal rights yeah. march definitely yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see you there. We'll, we'll watch it for your banner and you watch out for ours. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. Well, we're coming to the end of our time now. Um, so it's been absolutely, it's, it's been really, really interesting talking to you and, and find out what goes on behind the scenes as well. Um, so thank you very much for giving up your time today. Really, really do appreciate it. Yeah, so, you're welcome. Thank you for having me as well. And thank no, you for everything that you do because no, your group, no, like, like you especially as an individual, but also your group. Oh, well, thank you. Um, Because I obviously follow what you guys get up to and you do so much. I think you're one of the most active groups in the UK. We'll try our um, best. <laughs> yeah, so you do so much good work. So Thank you very much. I appreciate that coming from someone like you. So that's great. So I'm going to sign off now. So, uh, so this is Anna Malia talking to Aiden from Animal Justice Project saying thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now. Bye.